Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be talking about minimum window substring problem. First, let us try to understand the problem statement. We are given two springs T and S. We have to find the minimum window or the minimum substring in S that will contain all characters of T. So if you take this window in S, we have the characters A, B and C. If you take this window in S, we have the characters C, B and A, that is all characters of T. If you take this window, we have the characters B, A and C, again all characters of T. The length of this window is 6, the length of this window is also 6, and the length of this window is 4. So we have defined the window or the substring that has minimum length and also all characters of T. So the, so the output is B, A and C for this example. Okay, so how can we solve this problem? If you think of the brute force approach, we can find all substrings in S with minimum length equal to T and then see if those substrings have all of the characters of T. So we can start off with length equal to 3. So find all substrings in S with length equal to 3 and see if all of any of those substrings has all characters of T. If we don't find any substring that has all characters of T, then we can increase the length, substring length to 4 and then see if we can find a substring of length 4 with all characters of T. If, again, if we don't find a match or if we don't find a substring that has all characters of T, then we can increment the sub substring length to 5 and then see if we can find a substring that has all characters of T. So we can continue this process until we find a substring that has all characters of T. So we can continue this until n. So the computation time for calculating all of these substrings is if we add up all of them. So this looks like sum to n numbers if we add the first two numbers 1 plus 2 so which is equal to n to n plus 1 by 2 and the time complexity of such a solution would be we go of n square so this is quadratic so can we solve this problem in linear time so yes we can solve it in linear time using sliding window technique and two pointer technique so let's see how we can do that okay in order to keep track of the characters found in t Let's create an integer array for character count of t of size 128. Why 128? Because that's the size of ASCII code set. If we want to use extended ASCII, then we can increase the size to 256. For now, 128 is sufficient. So, as you know, ASCII value of A is 65, B is 66, and C is 67, and so on. So here, for string t, we have three characters A, B, and C. So I have updated these values, 1, 1, 1. For each of these characters. So the idea here is pretty simple. We'll have two indexes i and j. Index j moves from index 0 till end of the string. This index is used to find characters in s that is also seen in t. Now whenever we find a character in s that belongs to t, we increment this counter variable. So whenever the counter value is equal to length of the string t, that means that we have found a window in s that will contain all characters of t. Now, in order to find a minimum window, we'll shrink the window by discarding the character pointed by i and see if the window still has all characters of t. So, let's see how this works. Now, how do we know if a character in s is also seen in t? For that, we'll use this character count array. So, we'll take the character pointed by index j and decrement its value by 1 and if the value here in this character count array of for that particular character if it is greater than or equal to 0 that means that it is a character that is seen in t if it is less than 0 that means it's a character that is not seen in t now let's visualize the algorithm here index j is pointing to character a so let's decrement the count of that character in this character count array so we'll decrement this. Now, the value here is greater than or equal to 0. That means that this is a character that is seen in t. So let's update this count of t by 1. Now this index moves to moves by 1. Okay. So now the character pointed by j is d. So let's decrement the value of t in this character count array. So here, 
t is minus 1. Now, this is not greater than or equal to 0. That means that this is a character that is not seen in t. Now, let's update j again. So, character is here is O. So, let's decrement the value of O here in this character count array. So, this is minus 1. That means that this is a character that is not seen in T. Now, let's update J again. So, the character here is B. Let's decrement the value of the character B in this character count array. So, B is this one. Now, this is 0. Greater than or equal to 0. That means that this is a character that is seen in T. So, let's update this count. Now let's increment j. So the character pointed by j is e. So let's decrement the value of e in this character count array. So this is minus 1. This means that this is a character that is not seen in t. So we can ignore and we'll move to the next index. Now the character pointed by j is c. So let's decrement the value of character C in this character count array. So, so this is 1, let's make it 0. Now this is greater than or equal to 0. That means that this is a character that is seen in T. So let's increment the count. Now the count of T in S, this value is equal to length of T, which is 3. That means that we have found a window here. So this is the complete window. So how can we get this window? So this is basically j minus, so this is i minus 1. i minus 1 is here, so we, in order to get the complete window, we can do j minus i minus 1, or this is same as j minus of i plus 1. So this gives us the window. The size of this, the length of this window is 6. Now we have found one window, so let's try to shrink this window and see if we can find a smaller window that will contain all characters of t. So for that, we'll discard the character point by index i and see if the character is not seen in t. If it is seen in t, then that means that this is the window that has all characters of t. If it is not seen in t, then we can find a smaller window. So let's discard this character pointed by i. For that, we'll increment the value in this character count array pointed by index i. So we'll increment the value of it of character a by 1. Now if the value is greater than 0 then that means that this is a character that is seen in t. So what we'll do is in that case we'll decrement this count by 1 and move on to the next index i. So we'll move on to the next index. Now since this count is 2, again we come back to j and, and try to find a window that will contain all characters of t. So we save this 6. Now we explore other possibilities in the string to find a shorter window containing all characters of t. So now let's increment j. Now. The character pointed by J is O. So let's decrement the count of character O in this character count array. So this is minus 2. So this is less than 0. So we don't have to do anything. We can just increment J. Now the character pointed by J is D. So let's decrement the count of D in this character count array. So this is minus 2. This is less than 0. So we can we can ignore it and we can move on to the next character. The character pointed by J is E. So we'll decrement the count of that character here. This is still less than 0. So we can move to the next index. The character pointed by J is B. So let's decrement the count of 
B here in this character counter, right? This is minus one. So this is not a character that is seen in T. Why? Because we already have a character B that is seen in T. So this is an extra B. So when we shrink the window, when this B is gone, then this B is counted. So for now, since this is minus one, that means that this is a character that is not seen in T. So let's move to the next index. Now let's decrement the count, the value of the character pointed by J in this character count array. Here it is one, let's decrement that by one. So we have zero. If this is greater than or equal to zero, then that means that we have found a window or that means that we have found a character that is that belongs to T. So in that case, we'll increment this count. So this is three. Now again, we have found a new window that will contain all characters of T. So, and, and that window is this whole window. So, so the length of this window, if you see, is greater than six, isn't it? So the length of this window is greater than six. So we don't need to do anything. We can just explore other possibilities. So for that, we try to like shrink the window and see if we can find a smaller window that will contain all characters of T. So for that, let's discard the character pointed by I. So for that, we'll increment this by one. So if it is greater than zero, then we can, then we know that this is a character that is seen in T. Here, this is not greater than zero, so we can just ignore and move to the next index. Now we have found a new window that contains all characters of T. So what is the size of this window? So this is nine. Is nine smaller than six? So this is not true. So what we can do is we can try to shrink the window and find a window that is smaller than six. So for that, the character pointed by I is O. Let's increment the count of O in this array this is minus one is this greater than zero no so that means that this is a character that is not seen in t so we can continue to shrink the window so let's increment i now we have found another window so what is the size of this window so this is eight is eight smaller than six no this is also not true so we can continue to shrink the window so for that the character pointed by i is b so we'll in increment the count of P in this array. So this is zero. So is this greater than zero? This is not true. That means that we can continue to shrink the window. We can ignore this character. So we'll increment I. Now, we have found another window. The size of this window is seven. Is seven greater than six, uh, seven uh, smaller than six? No, so we can ignore this character again. Now for that, the character pointed by I is E. So let's increment the count of E here. So this is minus one. So is this greater than zero? No. So that means that we can discard this character because it is not seen in T. So let's increment I. Now we have found another window that contains all characters of T. So what is the size of this window? So this is six. Is six smaller than six? So this is also not true. So it's the same size as six. So we can continue to shrink the window. So the character point by I is C. So let's increment the count of C here in this array. Is this greater than zero? So this is true. So that means that we cannot ignore this character because this is a character that is seen in T. So now what we'll do is we'll try to increment J and see if we can find a window that is smaller than six. So we'll stop here and then we'll continue with J. So, so before we move on to J, since the character pointed by I, this C is greater than one. So what we have to do is 
we have to decrement this count because this is one of the characters that is seen in T. So let's decrement this by 1 and increment this index i. Now we'll move to j. So we'll increment j. The character pointed by j is n. So n should be before o. So the initial value of n this should be 78. So the initial value of n should be 0. Now what we'll do is we'll decrement the character pointed by j, the count of the character pointed by j in this in, in this array. So this will be minus 1. So is this greater than 0? So this is not true. So what we'll do is we'll increment j and try to find a new window. So we'll increment j. The character pointed by j is c. So let's decrement the, the count of c in this array. So this is 1 here. Let's decrement that. Now is this greater than or equal to 0? So this is true. This is equal to 0. So that means that this is a character that is seen in t. So let's increment the count of t in s. So then let's make it 3. Now this is equal to 3. That means that this is a... That means that we have found a window that contains all characters of t. So that is this window. Now the length of this window is equal to 7. So is this 7 less than 6? So this is not true. So let's try to shrink this window. So for that, first the character pointed by i is o. So we'll increment the count of o in this array. So this is so this is minus 1, so we will increment it. So this is 0. So is this greater than 0? So this is not true. So we will move to the next index. Now the character pointed by i is d. So let's increment the count of d in this array. So this is 0. Is this greater than 0? So this is not true. So we can again shrink the window. That means that this is a character that is not seen in d. So we'll shrink this window, we'll increment i. So during all these times, we are actually checking if the size of the window is uh, less than 6. So here, with, when, when i was at d, the window size is 6. So this is not less than 6, so that's why I'm moving forward. So now i, I is here. Um, so the window size is 5. Is this less than 6? So this is true. That means that we have found a new window that will contain all characters of t. So the window is, so the window is this one here, e, b, a, and c. So we'll update our result also with this new substring. And the count is 5. Now, the character pointed by i is e. So the value is minus 1. So let's decrement that. Uh, so let's increase that. So this is 0. Is this greater than 0? So this is not true. That means that we can continue to shrink the window. So we'll increment i. Now we have found a new window that contains all characters of t and the substring is b, a, and c. And the length of this is 4. Now let's see if we can shrink this window further. So the character pointed by i is b. Let's increment the count of that here in this array. So this is 1. So this means that this is a character that is seen in t. So what we have to do is, we have to in decrement this count. And we will increment i. Now, We'll stop iterating through i. We'll start from j. So j is here. So we'll increment j. Now j is at the end of the array. So we have come to the end of the array. That means that the substring that we found of minimum length is this one. So we'll exit from there. And the output, the, exact, uh, the expected output is b, a, and c. And this is the substring that we need. So now let's look at the code. 
So this is a function that will calculate the minimum window substring. So we are given two strings S and T. Now, initially we'll create an integer array called character count of T of length 128. We'll initialize that array with the character count of all the letters of T. We'll have, we'll initialize few of the variables. I, the index that is used to shrink the window. The min length initially, let's initialize it to the maximum value possible, a maximum integer value possible. Um, so count of T in S, so this is the counter that will keep track of the number of characters of T that we have seen so far. And this string min substring, so this will actually get the substring or the window that will contain all characters of T, the minimum substring. Now we iterate through this string S from from index j is equal to zero till the end of the string. So initially, what we'll check is the character pointed by j, we decrement the count of that and see if it is greater than or equal to zero. If it is greater than or equal to zero, that means that this was a character that was incremented here. So we increment the count. So we decrease, a, decrease the count of the character here and then increment this variable count to keep track of the characters that we have seen so far. So we increment this. Now while, now whenever this count is equal to the length of the string t, that means that we have found a window where we have all characters of t. So the length can be obtained by using this j minus pi minus one, that gives us the length, current length, and our min length, we'll check if this min length is greater than the current length. So whatever previous min length that we had. If that is the case, then we'll update this min length with the current length. And the min substring, the substring that we want, we can take the substring of i and j plus one. So this is j plus one exclusive, i inclusive. So that is the substring that we need. And so, so while we are trying to shrink the window, so we'll check if the character pointed by i, so we increment the count of that and see if it is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, that means this is a character that is required in t. So in that case, we decrement this count of t in s variable and increment the index i. So at the end of this iteration, this complete iteration, so we'll have the minimum substring, so we'll return this. So the code is present in the link below. If you learn something new, please hit the like button, do subscribe for more videos. Thank you.